All right, so how do you teach more than one or two novel units in any given year? In this video, I'm going to walk you through exactly how to do that. And first, I want to start off by saying that I always taught anywhere from four to five novel units within any given year. This was for fifth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, or high school, any of the classes that I taught. And then I also had a whole short story unit and a whole poetry unit as well. Um, and throughout the year, I mixed in informational text with the various novel units, short stories, etc., cetera, um, as well as poetry. So we're always kind of doing different um, aspects of our reading standards, not just novel unit, short story unit, poetry, etc. constantly intermingling all of them. All right, so I'm gonna walk you through how exactly I did this. And I'm gonna use my eighth grade class as an example for you. So when I taught eighth grade, I taught four novel units. The first unit that I always started the year with was the house on Mango Street, and that took seven weeks for us to complete. Then I read The Outsiders, which took us five weeks. Both of those were done before the winter break. So I got two novel units in before winter break, as well as my main short story unit happened between Thanksgiving and winter break. That way I had like those nice four solid weeks to do my short stories. Then when we came back after our winter break, I would read Romeo and Juliet with my eighth graders or the outsiders, depending on which school that I was at. And that took about seven weeks. That's a longer, hefty, particular, um, text that at the end of the year I did night with my eighth graders and that took us five weeks so I always reserved night for after we came back from in our case an Easter break or wherever you are maybe your spring break or something like that and so in between those two units I always did um, a multimedia unit with um, watching a film with my students as well as a poetry unit within that month of like March and that time frame essentially so that's how I was able to have those four units not how those are the four units rather that I taught to my eighth graders um, throughout the course of the year. So it's four novel units. So how exactly did I do this? That is what we are going to talk about today. All right, so first things first, for most of the texts, I actually did have my students read at home in small chunks. So this was for Mango Street especially, it's really easy to get through at home. The Outsiders is super interesting. Night, however, we did read in class together because of the content of that text. So you really wanna consider, you know, is this something that you wanna be reading with your students in class so you ha can have discussions together? And then with Shakespeare, like we read the whole play out loud in class together and took our time going through that particular text. The other thing that I want to say about this is when I, the examples that I'm sharing with you, I'm about to dive into my long range plans to show you what that looked like. I only taught Tuesdays and Thursdays and every other Wednesday. So I didn't really see my students for that much time. So it made me be super, super rigorous with my time and ensuring that I was using my time wisely. Um, so with that being said, you want to have your students read at home when you can and when i did do that there was no other homework in my class the only homework was to read which is really beneficial for my students and not having any other overwhelming content that they had to complete for my class and to be honest with you parents were very happy about that as well um, and i as a mom understand that too uh, that we don't want our our students you know hating homework at home with their parents and so be able to just read is a nice uh, little homework assignment and if anything, it's making our students, um, giving our students the best use of their time is to read quality texts. So that was one thing is you definitely, if you can, want to have your students read at home. That's not to say it's not possible to fit in a multitude of novel units throughout the year if you're reading in class, because that's exactly what I did when we were reading The Outsider, I'm sorry, when we were reading Romeo and Juliet or Othello or Julius Caesar, again, depending on which school I was at. Um, and then we read all of night together in class and it was not a problem at all. So with that being said, students reading at home, what if they don't read? <laughs> then they can't participate in class, right? Not exactly. We can get students up to speed with what it is that we are discussing as a class. No problem if they didn't read at home because inevitably that's going to happen. I always had students who just did not do the reading at home. And quite frankly, I gave them a little test, a little quiz rather the next day. It was just a quick comprehension quiz um, that I made myself to just make sure that they actually did do the reading and immediately I'd be able to tell who hadn't done the reading. Um, and so what I would do is when my students would get into their groups or we'd have a discussion together as a class, before we did that, we'd do a quick summary of the text that we had read the night before, as well as what's beautiful is one of the my favorite things to do when I got students um, into groups and the text that we're reading is I'd give students focused parts of the text 
to really work with. So for example, let's say that we're reading at the house on Mango Street and I have my students working in different groups of four to five students. They have one particular question about one key scene within the text that they read. So that student who maybe didn't do all of the reading that they were supposed to do, they are able to quickly read that key scene from the text. They have the summary that we talked about before we went into our groups. So they're still able to participate in all of the other aspects of ELA that we are working with, right? We're working with claims, we're working with evidence, we're working on speaking and listening skills. There are all types of other skills that students can still practice and work on, even if they did not complete the reading at home. So it's one thing that I just want to um, make note of because I know that is a struggle and that is something that inevitably pops up anyways. So have your students read at home. Don't freak out if they don't read at home bring them back into class, share a summary together, and then use the opportunity to put students into groups, focusing on key scenes with specific questions that accompany those key scenes. Okay, now I wanna bring you into my scope and sequence plans for this particular unit. Um, so we're gonna start with the house on Mango Street, just so you can kind of see how I paced it and set myself up for success. So you'll see now in my long-term planning on the screen, um, you'll see how I have all of the different things that I will be teaching within this particular unit for the house on Mango Street. So we'll read chapter one together in class because that's the introduction to this text. And then I have each of the vignettes that students will be reading um, either in class or at home. And having this particular um, scope and sequence set up for me like this ensures that I stay on task and on schedule essentially with my novel unit so it doesn't get away from me, right? I don't want students reading this text for eight, nine, 10 weeks. That gets really, really long. Um, so let's say for instance that uh, section two, our discussion of section two takes a little bit longer and we aren't able to get into our intro to chapter titles activity. Well, one of the things when we discuss section three is I might just make that discussion shorter. Instead of giving them 10 questions or 20 minutes to work with their group, I might cut that in half. There have absolutely been times, let's say I'm looking at I don't know, section five on the 27th here, and we were supposed to discuss section five, well, we may have run out of time. So instead of having a whole discussion of section five together as a class, those discussion questions then get to be used as group questions. Each group gets a question, they answer it, they present to the class. So instead of doing, let's say a Socratic seminar that's gonna take the whole class period, here we have groups working together, answering a question, presenting to the class, and maybe that's only gonna take 20 minutes instead of 60 minutes. So I'm not changing my plans for this day as a whole, I'm just changing the way in which we are discussing that particular section of the text. Um, and so on and so forth. And you'll see even when I say seven weeks, that includes a whole day for review for the test as well as the actual test day. And again, this is going with the fact that I only taught on Tuesdays and Thursdays and every other Wednesday, and I was still able to get through that text rather quickly. So having a schedule, long-term planning, your scope and sequence, whatever it is that you wanna call it, is immensely helpful for ensuring that you stay on task. So I can share this particular, my long range plans for my eighth graders with you um, in the section where you're watching this so that you can go ahead and download that for yourself as well. So now I wanna give you a deeper example of a scope and sequence like on a more intimate level so you can see it in a different capacity. So this is a sample for the giver. And what I wanna point out to you here is the opportunity to rinse and repeat activities across novels. So just because I did something with The House on Mango Street doesn't mean that I can't use it for um, The Outsiders or for Night. So you'll see here that we started the giver with anticipation stations. And anticipation stations are something that you can use for any text. So you know, okay, if I use anticipation stations for one novel unit, I can make my life a little bit easier and use anticipation stations as the introductory activity for another novel unit and so on and so forth. Same thing, the other thing that I like to use often is an evidence tracker with any text that I'm using. So this is where you'll give students, you know, their essential question at the beginning of the, the reading together. And as they are reading the text, they'll be filling it out, searching for evidence, um, you know, making a claim, finding premises or creating premises that support their position, et cetera. Um, and that's really helpful to have on hand throughout the time that you are reading any novel. So that's a great rinse and repeat activity to use over and over and over again. You'll also wanna come up with um, certain you know, discussion activities. 
And we actually have a whole blog post about this that I can link into the comment section about different ways to have discussions with your students. So you could do, of course, a Socratic seminar, or you could do something called a discussion panel, or you can do silent debates. You can do all different kinds of things with small group discussions, and I'll include um, a link to a, a really good blog post that we have that you can read a little bit more closely about that. But the point is, is that you're going to use these same types of discussion activities across novel units. So again, making it a lot easier for yourself as you are working through a text throughout the school year so that you know Hey, I've done silent debates. I know exactly how it works. I know exactly how long it's going to take me. Now I'm not concerned necessarily about going over my allotted time on my scope and sequence. And I can make sure that I have space for all of, you know, the texts that I want to read throughout the year. So that's another way that you can keep yourself on task. So one we talked about is it's absolutely possible to include four to five novel units throughout the year. Two that we talked about is ensuring that you have a scope and sequence in place. You can make small adjustments here and there. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to push a whole day back. You could just change the activity that you're doing in class. You really wanna have students read at home if possible. Um, and again, if not, like I've done with all of my Shakespeare units, we always read the whole text in class. Then the other thing that you wanna make sure that you are doing is using rinse and repeat activities. So things like discussion questions that you can use over and over and over again, whether that's a Socratic seminar structure or a silent debate structure or whatever it might be. Um, so you wanna just make note of those types of things to make your life a whole heck of a lot easier as a teacher so that you can anticipate, oh, I know that's gonna take me about this long and you can stay on, on task with your novel unit that you're reading. We actually have a great activity or a great unit that walks you through exactly how to nail down your novel unit. So like the different contents that, that you get to make sure that you include when you're thinking about creating a novel unit, which is a whole separate discussion. Actually, we could do a whole separate YouTube video about that. Um, but that's really helpful too in ensuring like you kind of keep parameters around yourself so that you're not just going on and on and on and on and on with a text and you're spending three months on a text and students are as over it <laughs> as you are quite frankly. Um, so hopefully that you found that helpful and you can start to incorporate um, some of these strategies into, into your own teaching of a novel unit in your classroom. But I just wanna give you permission at the end of this that you might find that you have to throw away a whole novel unit at the end of the year and you're just not gonna get to it. And that has happened to me before when I've over planned, um, which I would rather do is over plan and have to do that and scrap something, then completely under plan and not be prepared for the school year. So as much as it is gonna pain you to have to throw away all of that work, I'd rather do that than not have something and be flying by the seat of my pants. And then the beautiful thing is that for the following school year, you know, okay, these are the areas where I had a little hiccup and I got stuck and it took me a little bit longer than I thought it was going to. And that's the case where like, I'll take out a notepad and make notes to myself that, hey, this took too long, let's do a different activity next time. And I'm constantly like writing things down to make note of and just be aware of for the next year that I'm planning so that I do a little bit better of a job, right? Because it's a skill. You always just kind of get a little bit better um, at planning as, as you practice, right? Just like with any other skill. The other video, before I let you know this, um, make sure you subscribe where you're watching this video. But the other video that I wanted to point your attention to is our how to fit it all in video, which is gonna talk to you about like structuring your days. Um, so you can ensure that you actually are able to fit in all of the standards that you need to cover. Because that's one thing that I wanna mention too, is that as you get to kind of the end of the school year and you might find yourself having to throw out a whole novel unit, just because the whole novel unit is gone, doesn't mean that you're missing out on all of those standards that that novel unit would have taught, right? Students say we're missing out on that text that is kind of, that's a bummer, right? We wanna teach them certain texts for sure. Um, but there are of course other ways to hit those particular standards that that text was originally going to with our students, whether that's through smaller assignments and things like that. Um, but just take the pressure off of yourself to ensure that you include everything because you just might not be able to until you really start to hone in this skill. All right, hopefully you found this video um, helpful for you. And if you did, let us know below. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time on our next video.